Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV, guys. We're gonna be reacting to what are we doing to white people, guys. Let's get straight into this. Let's talk about what we're doing to white people. There's been something going on for a while now that we're being told not to notice. More to the point, that we're asking white people not only to ignore, but to accept the rising tide of racial hatred against white people. In the past decade, there has been a noticeable cultural shift in what constitutes acceptable speech as it relates to white people. Back when I was a kid in the early 2000s, the mainstream American culture preached about respecting each other's differences and not seeing color. Nowadays, we say that not seeing color is racism, that you must see color. But the more I see how things are unfolding, the more I'm convinced that this is wrong. Back then, saying something offhanded about white people were seen as not appropriate, just as it would be to say something offhanded about people of any other race. But that soon gave way to our current times, in which there exists virtually no limit to what racial minorities can and do say about white people. I believe this is the natural outgrowth of a perverse ideology that teaches us that everything, every societal ill, is the fault of white people and that whatever prejudice acts we may inflict upon them does not constitute discrimination because we don't have the power to discriminate. And alarmingly, this is particularly pronounced in the younger generation. But is it true? Do we not have the power to discriminate? Well, let's see. First, let's take a look at the racial hatred at the interpersonal level. In today's society, it has become somewhat fashionable to think things and say things about and to white people that would not be acceptable if it was said about any other race. And we're being taught that this double standard is not wrong, that it is rather a form of empowerment. They'll attribute negative experiences that they've had with white people to their whiteness. You had an argument in line at the grocery store with a white person? They were acting entitled because they were white. A white driver cut you off when you were driving? They need to check their white privilege. Your actions, your conduct, and your existence, in other words, boil down to your whiteness. And ashamedly, at one point in time, this was how I used to think as well. And beyond the people in my circle, I noticed that many people of color have this sort of blase attitude, an attitude most particularly pronounced when there are no other white people around. Things are being said not just behind closed doors, but out in the open, not just between close friends, but between complete strangers. So here's the thing. This is something that I've experienced countless times, so I know that there are other people who are experiencing it too. I know it must resonate with at least some of you. The difficulty here is that no matter how many anecdotes I share, they are just that, anecdotes. And people who refuse to believe that this is happening will just chalk it up to my experiences being a fluke. Or worse yet, they'll say I'm lying. So I've compiled some TikTok videos. I want you to take a look at the things that are being said about white people, especially by the younger generation. The kind of statements people wouldn't dare say about people of any other race. Take a look at what is stunningly in vogue in today's society and ask yourselves, where does this lead to years down the line? You have a token white and you're hanging out with your friend group of color. You need to ask permission from everybody in the group to bring your white friend. Like don't just bring them. With them. I might not be in the mood to deal with white shenanigans that day. That's, that's all I'm saying. And another thing, it feeds into their ego. Like, don't, don't let them think they're a good white person. Accomplices ask, how can they support black and indigenous people of color? And sometimes I really don't know what to say, but here's one easy way. Just don't have babies. Men can single-handedly cause the white genocide that they are so afraid of. With 2.25 billion Asian women and half a billion white men, baby, it'll only take two generations. In two generations, there will no longer be any blonde hair. These are some things I noticed about white American culture. Being grounded is a punishment to them. That's what they call punishment. Mm. The least grounded, least balanced, most destructive race considers being grounded a punishment. Yeah. They also say really violent phrases. Like they say things like, kill two birds with one stone. Why do we have to kill the birds? Why is everything so violent? It's almost like one's language and phrases reflects one's nature. Mm. So that new uh, Jeffrey Dahmer movie on Netflix is the perfect example of the sensationalization of white violence. People have a much easier time sympathizing with white criminals than they do with black victims. And people think these shows are harmless, but they actually contribute to a much bigger issue. It contributes to the viewpoint that white people are less violent than everyone else, and white violence is something to be consumed in media, and that's it. What is 
with Caucasian people and like their inability to like read a fucking room. Like y'all act like you don't understand shit because y'all be the first ones during a conversation about the Holocaust to get so mad when black people be like, you do realize that the original Jewish people were black, right? White people do not need to explain to anybody about us all bleeding red because baby, you all are the people that need to learn that lesson. Clearly, history shows that you all are the people that like to pillage and eradicate, enslave and oppress, attempt to suppress greatness because you all simply don't have it, right? Here go y'all cum goblins who don't even live in the fucking city. Which, by the way, the Q-tip people are the last ones to ever talk about somebody stealing anything. Y'all wouldn't be in this country had it not been for y'all stealing it. So y'all are more focused on people looting and trying to get necessities and things that they need. And yes, a TV is a fucking necessity. Thank you. You feel like you're better than because people are out here stealing and ugh, you would never. First of all, if you are a male monster, that is how your ancestors got everything from stealing. People are and that's a behavior that's very common among white women you may have not intended that but there are many white women who act exactly like you if you can find it in your heart this holiday season <laughs> to donate to the discriminated white fund you'd be helping millions nothing says high protein like cicadas and cheese make sure you f and nothing says caucasity like that right there what caucasity looks like Roaming Asian grocery stores like it's an amusement park. Explain to me why white people don't wear shoes outdoor, but wear shoes inside. We're both white women. We are inherently a danger in spaces for black, indigenous, and other people of color simply by existing. It's white cis men who are a part of the far right wing ideology of fascism. That is a true threat and the terrorism to this country. If BIPOC stand in the street and scream at the top of their lungs, I hate all white people, I want all white people to go die, die white devil, you cracker bitch, um, that's still not racism. You're not one of the good white people. Stop separating us from the bad white people. Don't sit out there in comments and say, we don't claim them. We are that. <laughs> we are the ones shooting up schools. We are the ones raping people, the ones enslaving people. We're and I'll say it, I hate being white. You know, which means I'm one of the good ones. All white people are inherently racist. Yeah. Can you be racist against white people? Based off of the definition of racism, yes, but it's not gonna hurt them and hurt their opportunities like it does people of color. Well, technically you can, it's not like an issue. You can't right? oppress the oppressor. It helps you sleep at night. Why do people not understand that you can't be racist to white people? It's, it's impossible. The system is not set up that way. You can insult white people, but it is not racism. Me calling a white person a tub of mayonnaise and a like, flower looking ass, it's not, that's not racist. You went all the way to Africa to physically take black people from their homes, shove them in on boats where a lot of them got diseases and died, told them where they could sit on a bus, told them which schools they could go to, which water fountains they could use, which bathrooms they could use, and that's sugarcoating it. Those are just terms. I'm not even describing all the disgusting things that happen, and they don't even want revenge? They are letting you guys skate by asking for equal rights? That's it? And you're still saying no? They are not as angry as they should be. Y'all are getting off easy and you're still saying no? Fuck you. Some people look at that and chalk it up to the grumblings of the powerless. That's the idea that when you have a power disparity, the less powerful sort of has this general society given leeway to complain about the more powerful. The villagers complaining about their king doesn't have the same ring as the king making snide and crude comments about the villagers. But that's not what's going on here. Because although certain segments of our society refuse to believe this, even as evidence mount before our very eyes, in one side of the political aisle, people of color actually have greater power than white people. That is the truth that is not being acknowledged by the people that need to hear it because this gets in the way of them wielding that power in the way they want, malignantly. I've heard from somewhere that politics is downstream of culture and I think that is certainly correct. We have a mainstream culture that tells us it's okay to hold prejudiced and hateful view of white people and our politics is then infused with this energy and we see active overt and on the books racial discrimination of white people that those who are perpetuating this hatred is refusing to see as discrimination. They'll say, no, 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 this is remediation. 
These are the same people who are making tenuous arguments that some of our race-neutral laws discriminate against people of color. And this is certainly evidence that in one side of the political aisle, people of color have more power than white people. Because if we didn't have the power, we wouldn't be able to put into place practices and policies that does this. That's what power is. Things like Minneapolis local government agreeing to a contract with the teachers union that says white teachers must be fired first. New York City's government enacting a policy of having white seniors go to the back of the line on life-saving COVID treatment. A college professor that says white people should be killed and facing no repercussions. Cornell University banning white people from rock climbing lessons. One of many, many, many instances of liberal colleges doing the utmost to exclude and ostracize white students. BIPOC-only events equal no whites, but they don't have the guts to say that, even though that is what that is. That's what makes it different than the murk rumblings of the common villager. The villagers have surrounded the palace, demanding Mary Antoinette's head. The power dynamics have shifted. That is a fact. Progressive media outlets do not cover these stories. Some people out there have no idea that this is going on. But worse, some others out there know but agree with what's going on. And for those people to convince themselves that this is not racial discrimination, they play mind tricks and word games. They use phrases and talking points like punching up. You can't be racist to white people. You can't oppress the oppressor, meaning I'm acting oppressively, but I've designated you as the oppressor, so everything goes. Or Amor X Candy's infamous words, the only way to remedy past discrimination is current discrimination. Or when people say things like, what we're doing to white people is not racism because racism is prejudice plus power and we don't have the power. <laughs> they use all this mind-bending apparatus to delude themselves into believing what they're doing faces no moral quandary. But in the back of their minds, perhaps in their subconscious minds, is racial revenge. We experienced it, you experience it too. See how you like it. That people of color are using our newfound power to act this way and then pretend like none of this is going on leads me to believe that we would have done the same thing that white people did were we to be in their historical position. Because such acts have its roots in human nature, not white people nature. And one can only imagine what might happen in the coming decades when the demographics of the US will have shifted such that white people will no longer constitute the majority. When the younger generation you've just seen have graduated from elite schools and hold positions of power in our institutions, our government, corporations, entertainment, news media, and so forth, how they might, in wielding the levers of society, be able to rationalize, using their adult brain, the hatred that was embedded in their minds during their adolescence. What we're seeing is just the beginning. To the white people who are watching, I just want to say, you are not an oppressor for refusing to accept an ideology that teaches people to hate you, that teaches you that you are inherently bad, that your children are inherently bad, that you are inherently racist no matter what you do or how you think. That you need to repent by taking affirmative steps in your life to redress harms that your ancestors may have done or the racist actions of other white people. In fact, you are not an oppressor, period. You did not choose to be born white, just like any of us did not choose to be born in, your, in our race. And to ask of you, at the individual level, for example, to give your life in service of people of color, to be used as physical barriers at protests, to give away your house to black people instead of your children, all actual things that have been publicly demanded of white people, to ask this of you is morally reprehensible collective punishment. You are not under any obligation to carry yourself in any sort of way that others demand of you just because of the color of your skin. This, you need to do this and you need to do that because you benefit from privilege thing is bogus. It is just a way for people harboring racial animus to attack you, to say that the accomplishments you've achieved in your life isn't yours and to silence you. It is not you. It is this ideology that is wrong and perverse. It is one cloaked in a shroud of pseudo-justice and self-righteousness, all the while excreting toxic fumes of racial hatred. It blames all white people for the actions of their ancestors, something you have no control over, while absolving black people of personal responsibility for their own individual actions by holding that black people commit acts of harm, for example, towards another community. That's the fault of white supremacy. White people are controlling them like puppets on a string. It's a backwards, transgressive ideology. If you don't harbor any hate in your heart but want to fight it as a matter of principle, this does not make you racist or bigoted. If you refuse to accept their premise in your head but are too afraid to voice your opinion, you are neither a coward nor a bad person. If you're of a liberal bent but there's a small corner in your brain telling you as you're watching this video that perhaps some of this is wrong, listen to your intuition. Maybe you think, oh, I agree with most of what the progressive left teaches about racial justice, but just not with some of this disagreeable stuff only at the extremes. I'm here to tell you that the rot starts 
at the core. This racial hatred of white people is a natural outgrowth, part and parcel of an ideology that attempts to indoctrinate us into believing that there is current systemic oppression going on, that all racial disparities we see today is the sole result of oppression by white people, when there are other more plausible explanations to be had that these same people are silencing as impermissible hate speech. They're telling you, shut up, you'll take it, and you'll like it. But contrary to what they're saying, you don't have to take that. You can believe that the things that have been done in the past were morally wrong, as well you should, all the while believing that what is currently going on is also wrong, that we're going backwards, that this is history rhyming with itself, the table is turning in an eye for an eye manner. As the great Mahatma Gandhi once said, an eye for an eye will leave the whole world blind. But those driven by hatred would sooner gouge everyone's eyes out than realize that true victory for people of color would have been having history record that when the power dynamics shifted, we treated white people with a kindness that their forefathers may not have shown our forefathers. But now, it will say when we gained the power, we turned around and started doing some of the same stuff to white people. Segregation, social ostracization, hatred sanctioned by government and law. And we're doing all of this while pretending like we're doing something valiant. We've missed our bus, but that doesn't mean that there can't be a course correction. So, to some people of color watching who are engaging in this sort of hatred, whether or not you're acutely aware, the same people that act like white people as a collective are not people, but rather some pernicious alien force that has come to invade the earth, with this video, I implore you to ask yourself, what are we doing to white people? As some people love to say, do better. Hmm. Happy New Year. Guys, this was a lot. But to be honest, we won't deny the fact that some white people are racist. I don't feel white people are racist. I feel people are racist because you can be black and be racist. Come brown and racist. I, I don't really know because because like when we say white people, they're not actually white, you know. Like I'm not black, you know. <laughs> I think I'm more of just kind of brown. <laughs> but guys, like when we talk about racism, I feel is an ideology and a really terrible one. We know it happened, and we know it's still happening. If we want to be honest with ourselves, but. We blame white, we blame white people that like you did this to us and we have to pay back. Like what he said is actually correct, but most of what he said is correct. Like you, you don't really have to prove a point. It happened. Just let go. Like just let go because sometimes if you don't, there's this quote I have. You don't have to win a fight. No, you already won. I don't have to lose a fight. No, you already lost. So I feel we already won the fight, so there's no need of trying to prove a point, like trying to badmouth some white people, seeing white people at this. I feel everybody have, every individual have his own mindset. And I don't feel because you're white, you think like this, and because you're black, you think like this. Like, to be honest, we black people are saying ourselves to the white, so I don't feel we should blame the white for buying us because we actually sold ourselves. That's the, the part that does not make sense. You can't blame them when they didn't force you. Like, they give you something, even if it wasn't worth it. But they're asking smart and our forefathers are selfish. That will happen and that's what happened. But guys, don't forget to like, just go to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.